Thank you. Um, so my take on it is pretty much the same as you, because that was my, as Ragi, my experience. It came and went. Yes. Peace came and went. Joy came and went. Happiness came and went. So-called understanding came and went. So when I looked at what is the truth, I found one thing was I had an idea which was very much unique to me, because when I talked about it, people had different ideas. I had a specific idea of what truth was and truth wasn't. It was Ragi's idea. Of course I understood genes, conditioning, blah, blah, blah. That didn't help very much. So the same was with enlightenment, self-realization. I had a specific idea of what it was and what it wasn't. And this is not sequential, what I'm saying. At some point then I recognized truth, enlightenment, peace, whatever it is, is still for Ragi an object to be found, not found, experienced, not experienced, accepted, etc. It's still some kind of an object, whether it's a mental object, an experiential object, an energetic object. So these two things help me to understand why the seeking is happening. basic seeking is that there's always some objective goal, desire, place, experience, state, energy. Okay? Even love for most of us is a kind of an object. It's a reductionist argument to call it an object, but since we're familiar with the non-dual terms I'm using it. It's a different audience, I wouldn't call it an object call it a feeling or something like that. So, if we understand that anything we're seeking, whether it's truth or something else, is some kind of object for us, in our understanding of it, in our experience of it, that becomes really interesting. Okay, there's the object I'm looking for. Of course, we've tasted the object, we've, we've held the object, we've loved the object, we were once one with the object, and all that has happened, yes? Yay. And then we miss it, we want it again, we want it for long, we want it permanently, blah, blah, blah. It's still because there's an object, subject. And that's you already understand. So this subject-object relationship I discovered was the nature of the functioning of the intellect. Not all mind. I have this subtle conceptual difference now, which maybe wasn't there when I last met you, that for me I was trying to understand what the intellect is and what mind is. So for me, intellect is functioning in duality as duality. There's always a subject-object. And the basis of intellect is thoughts, thought structures, beliefs, ideas, concepts, etc. So as long as I'm looking for something with the intellect, it will remain an object. And my understanding of it is a so-called objective understanding. In other words, I can describe what truth is, what it's not. I can even describe the colors, the shape, the form, the taste, the flavor. And, you know, some people really experience truths like this. The second thing was, that was discovered, or the third or fourth thing, I forget now, is that truth comes from memory. The idea of truth, what it is and what it's not, is only coming from memory. Without memory, in the so-called present moment, there's no actual idea of truth or no truth. And it's really interesting because even at the level of the cellular memory and the energy body, there can be a moment where there's no memory or no active memory. 
regarding the memory. Uh, what you mentioned is very important, but at the same time, if you want to, if you want to experience uh, something new that you never did, memory is an obstacle. That brings me to the fifth or sixth or whichever point. That if we believe truth from memory is some kind of an object, meaning state, experience, uh, whatever it is, yes? and there's a comparison of truth, non-truth, that's one way of searching. If for a moment we change what you just said, which is our memory of truth, our understanding of what truth is not and is, then there is a possibility in the moment Everything is the truth. And my understanding of everything is the truth is everything is the self. The self is the truth. Truth is the self. Consciousness, God, love. So that concept is accurate as a concept. Yes. It's understood by the intellect. It's felt by the heart. Yes. But if we want to, or are interested, we analyze what the words mean, or our understanding of the words. If the self means everything, then the word truth makes sense. In that context, truth is the self, self is the truth. Because the word self means everything, including nothing. Yes? But when we take truth on its own, truth has the duality of no truth or lie. And we've temporarily forgotten or moved away from the understanding the self is everything. So if we take the same word, the truth, and instead of it being a descriptive word of some things and not other things, but it's a word which means everything, that's always ever happening or not happening, we are always in the presence of the truth. Everything that we are doing or not doing, everything that everybody, anybody has ever done through history, and that's another difficult one, is the truth. The truth is what we are. If the self is what we are, and the truth is what we are. Intellectually, for some of us, and that was my case, I then had to come back to the idea of no truth, lie, or all the terrible things that happen, and somehow include that in the word truth, include it in the word self, and then I was at peace with lies, no truths. Or I understood that no truths are an aspect of the self, Therefore, no truths are also an aspect of the so-called truth. But that was difficult for me particularly because in my experience of trauma, which was in the body, there was a resistance to that. Bad actions, injustices, violence, all that. So that was a challenge not for the, only the intellect, but for the emotional body, physical body, and the So if we come back then to our seeking, am I still seeking the truth? Yes. Is the truth here? Yes. It's no longer a paradox. And one day then, we check and say to ourselves, what am I seeking for? It's not the truth anymore. Because we've understood and accepted. Everything is always the truth. I am the truth. 